talk about that. Um, see if some of us, not you're already in six but some of us can. <laughs> yeah, you might have to when they Steve and Kathy play. You might have to move it over there. Sure.
one song. So. Um, Hey, Bob. I don't know. It's nice to be in your other digs here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a real nice. This is a beautiful sanctuary. Like, yeah. I'm not the yellow of the system. It's the uh, windows kind of match. You, know? you see how they're, the banners are for the whole Holy Week. <laughs> Welcome. We'd like to thank you all for joining us here for this 
Monday, Thursday service. Um, you're in for a real treat. Uh, we would like to uh, thank Mayflower Congregational UCC in Sioux City, our partner congregation, uh, for also joining us at this service. And we are doing a mixture of both churches uh, with all of their talents and going to be good. We want to thank Mayflower for joining us and we're so happy that we could have a joint service both today and tomorrow. Tomorrow our Good Friday service will be at uh, Mayflower in Sioux City along with the other first congregational in, U in, in Sioux City. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of an overview of uh, as to what Monday Thursday is all about. Monday Thursday is the first of three Holy Week rituals following Palm Sunday and culminating on Easter Sunday. Monday means commandment. Monday Thursday acknowledges the new commandment that Jesus gave his disciples at the Feast of the Last Supper. Monday Thursday also recognizes Jesus' incredible act of servant leadership in washing the feet of his disciples. This is a solemn observance that helps us pay close attention to the significant details of the events leading up to Christ's death and resurrection. Now, would you all please stand, if able, for the call to worship and uh, remain standing for the opening hymn. The congregational response is in the bolded print. <clears throat> Come, let us join at the table. Let us join at the table. Let us be set free. Come, a place is set for each of us. Let us join at the table. Let us be set free. Come join the misfits, thieves, and liars. Let us join at the table. Let us be set free. Come young and old, from near or far. Let us join at the table. Let us be set free. Come where shame is no longer welcome. Let us join at the table. Let us be set free. Come where forgiveness and mercy triumph. Let us join at the table. Let us be set free. Our opening hymn is Come Gather in This Special Place. It is number 335 in your New Century Hymn. Uh, 
Uh, one last thing, uh, if you want to make a donation, the uh, donation plate is in the back of the sanctuary, and you can put that uh, in the offering plate as you leave. Our invocation is responsive. The congregational response is in the bolded print. Come, a new commandment has been given. From before the foundation of the world. Come, that we may love one another. That our joy may be full, and that we may be set free. Amen. And now for our special music, we have Steve Pratt from First Congregational here in Whiting on the guitar, and Kathy Davis from Mayflower Congregational on the violin.
Now would you join me in the unison prayer of confession is in the bold print in your bulletin. Merciful, mighty, matchless one, you have loved us to the end. There was betrayal in our heart, yet you loved us anyway. You knew we would deny you, yet you loved us anyway. Our selfishness we fought, we objected, we disapproved, yet you loved us anyway. We sought to point the finger at anyone other than ourselves, yet you loved us anyway. Forgive us, we pray. Renew our healing convictions. Restore our call to service. Rekindle our flame for justice, that we may once again become your people of peace. Hear and receive the good news. The one who created us has called us. There is now no condemnation, no shame at the table of God, only the love that makes us whole again, only the love we offer others. In God's name we are forgiven. In God's name we have been set free. Amen. Amen. Our first uh, scripture reading of the evening is uh, from the Hebrew Bible, book of the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel, that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn of the land in Egypt, in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be on a side for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall be this shall be as a perpetual ordinance. Imagine yourself and your family in this text, among those Israelites who were enslaved and desperate. What thoughts might go through your mind as you follow these instructions and prepare this meal? How would you explain to the children why they are eating so hurriedly. 
Are you excited, fearful? What images of oppression and liberation come to mind? Where do you experience the need for freedom in your life, community, in our world? What is the cost of freedom? And our next hymn is My Faith Looks Up to Thee, and it is uh, verse 1, and it should be in your bulletin insert. Certainly, we remember Christ's death when we gather here. 
But what does a future rich in grace and hope look like when Christ will come again? What does this moment feel like entwining memory, faith, and hope? <clears throat> Do you welcome Christ when you sit down to break bread with friends? Whom does Christ call you to invite to join you at the Lord's table? Now, uh, hymn number 342 in your New Century Hymnal, Be Known to Us in the Breaking of the Bread. Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. 
If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And I, as, as, as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Imagine yourself in this upper room with Jesus and his friends. <clears throat> with whom do you identify? How, how do you feel? Peter re resists Jesus' service for foot washing. Would you? Are you surprised that Je Jesus included Judas in the foot washing? What would it take to offer a service of love to someone who hurt or betrayed you? What manner of love does Jesus model and command us? Our next hymn is, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant? Hymn number 539 in the New Century Hymn. This is the Lord's table, and Christ invites you to share this meal of grace. Christ recognizes you and looks upon you with favor. Christ befriends you and wants you within his circle. Count yourself among Christ's disciples by partaking in this feast of fellowship. Our communion hymn is... As we gather at your table, it is number 332 in the New Century Hymnal, and we're going to do uh, just verse 1. <laughs>
congregational response for the communion prayer is in your bulletin in the bolded print. May the giver of peace be with you. May God's justice burn in you. Our hearts are wounded and wandering. We lift them up to God. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's love endures forever. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Creator, Maker of heaven and earth. At the dawn of creation, you breathed life into dirt, and glory sprung from the ground. God's love endures forever. From the fury and flood you protected Noah, as many children as the stars you promised Abraham. In the dreams of a slave named Joseph, Israel feasted during famine. With the rod of Moses and the songs of Miriam, you delivered Israel from slavery. God's love endures forever. In our need of forgiveness you gave us Jesus. He could speak to the wind and the waves. He could heal with mud and dance on water. He preached good news to the poor. He blessed the lowly. He opened the way to God. God's love you forever. When he had been crucified, when he was dead and buried, you lifted Jesus from the grave and gave us resurrected life. God's love endures forever. With the roaring of your love, you set us aflame. Your justice became our joy. Your peace became our promise. God's love endures forever. Through the waters of baptism, you made us your own. In our lives together, we carry your witness and your love comes to life among us. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's love endures forever. And now let us say together in unison the prayer that Jesus taught his earliest disciples to pray by boldly saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in the upper room where an ordinary meal became an instrument of God. At this table, Jesus broke bread with those who would betray him. At this table, table Jesus drank wine with one who would deny him. At this table, Jesus communed with those who would abandon him. At this table, Jesus gave a new commandment. At this table, we learn to love one another as God loves us. At this table, we sit at the table of God. So remember with me on that night, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it. And gave it to them saying, this is my body my life broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, and after pouring out the wine, he said this to them, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I tell you, I will not drink of it, of it again with you until that day I drink it with you in the kingdom of God's love. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty, the mighty acts of Jesus, our 
Messiah, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ. Pour your spirit upon us also, that we may be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until we arrive at the heavenly banquet of God. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit and the bond of peace, all glory and honor are yours, creating God now and forever. Amen. So the way that we will do uh, communion uh, this evening is that uh, you will be invited to come forward. Um, let's start with the back rows first, and you, uh, we are doing it by intinction. Um, you just rip off a piece of bread and then dip it in the, the grape juice. Um, I think we have some lovely grapes up here, too. We like some of those. <laughs> the table is ready. Let all come.
Our Creator, our Savior, our Sustainer, in this holy mystery you have given yourself to us. We are eternally grateful. Empower us that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit, to give ourselves to each other in the name of Jesus the Christ, who gave his life for us. Amen. 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 Now may the love of God go with us. May God's face shine upon us. May we carry God's love into the world, loving one another as God has loved us. May our lives bear witness to the never-ending love of God.